Welcome back to the Valley to Peak Nutrition Podcast. This is episode number one for the new year. Hope you guys had a great Christmas. We definitely did, and we are excited to jump back into normal routine. I'm going to be very uh, transparent with you and say that I was a little apprehensive to do this one. It seems like what I should do, which is why the apprehension, right? It seems like, oh, well, you know, someone who runs a nutrition business who's focused on exercise or training or whatever um, should post something about the new year and something about goals and something about all of these other things. It's just very, very predictable, which is fine, I guess, but I don't love it. With that being said, I feel like it's needed. And here's why. One of the things that i see the most in talking to so many people throughout the week and the month and the year is that the greatest struggle people have especially when it comes to the area of nutrition and exercise and could probably go to a lot of different places is consistency and what i tend to see as i dive in deeper to why they've had trouble with consistency is there's no real game plan Right. I mean, people have we're we're great at developing general ideas like, oh, I would like to be uh, more fit. I would like to buckle down on my finances. I would like to lose a certain number of pounds or put on a certain amount of muscle or they've got they've got kind of general goals, but no real game plan on how to get there. It kind of lacks specificity. You know, our, our program, Valley to Peak program is it has a very tangible, very direct, very straightforward process to follow. And it's, uh, it, it, it works if the person does it. But I think one of the reasons why it works is because it allows people to feel and be consistent. And I think the reason that they're consistent is because there's a game plan and now they understand things. So I thought as predictable as it might be, it, this is a really great opportunity at the beginning of the year when almost everyone has something they want to improve upon or to do in the coming year um, to, to teach you or to talk about how to develop a real game plan, how to put structure to a big idea or a general goal. Because I think then you're going to be able to have not only a roadmap you can follow, but I also think that it's going to be so much more motivating. When you have a roadmap and a blueprint or whatever buzzword you want to put in here to follow, it's so much more encouraging and motivating to wake up and to go put in the work as opposed to when like let's take weight loss for example i had no motivation just to wake up and go to the gym right i mean that's one of the things people say i want to eat better and go to the gym it's such an ambiguous term it's like well what does that even look like you go and you kind of jump on the elliptical and you do that for a few weeks and you get bored with the elliptical so then you move to the stairs and you get bored with the stairs and you do something that looks like you push your legs out kind of looks like rollerblading but you never really sweat so you don't know if it's working and by then you're just like i'm not really seeing any progress and so it's not it's not a it's not a lack of willpower like a lot of people think it's just a it's lack of a clear and, and definite game plan joining me on the podcast is chantelle from uphill athlete and so I'm going to give you a few things that we've used over the years with a lot of people with success. And then she's going to chime in about that as well. So she and I recorded kind of a separate podcast on the topic, um, but I wanted to go back and give it even more structure than what, um, what I did not give in there, (laughs) but yet she still had some really, really great things to say. So I'm going to pull some of that conversation and loop it in as a part of the points in here. So parts of this are just going to be solo, just me. And then you will also hear from her. You'll hear us mention a couple of things throughout the course of the podcast about programs and resources and other things along that nature. And I will link those in the show notes. So if you do get interested, you can go and check those out without having to just Google and wonder was this what he was talking about? So let's look at this. I wanted to, I wanted to kind of lead by giving you three helpful things just to get starters along uh, get started with a few reminders along the way. And this might seem obvious, but number one, you've got to decide what you actually want, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But 
in a nutshell, that is going to dictate everything you want to do. And I'll give you kind of two obvious examples just to drive the point home. If you want to improve your cardiovascular endurance, or you say, I would really like to be able to go further and longer, you want to improve your endurance, yet you go to the you go to the gym or you go to your garage or you show up, you wake up in the morning, you begin training, and the only thing that you're doing is a bunch of CrossFit style workouts or lifting a lot of weights or doing a strong lifts five by five program, you're probably never going to see the endurance improve. And then on the flip side of that, if you say, Hey, I really want to improve my strength. I'd like to get stronger and be less injury prone. And all you're doing is a lot of zone two cardiovascular stuff. You're probably never going to improve your strength. So rule number one, a foundation is you've got to really define what it is that you want, because that is going to number one, help you develop a game plan, but number two, really cut down on discouragement. Because if you want one thing, but you're training for something or you're doing something that's totally different than that thing, you'll get discouraged quick and wonder why you're not seeing the type of progress that you want to see in spite of you uh, investing the time that you think you need to be investing. And in reality, it's got nothing to do with you. It's the plan sucks. (laughs) It's not in alignment with what you wanted. So you've got to really define what it is that you want. And this is the second part. And then we're going to hear a a clip from our other episode after this. The second part is you've got to decide why you want it because there will be, there is in every scenario, a point where it is not fun anymore. (laughs) It is very fun in the beginning. You see a lot of progress in the beginning. You can almost bank on seeing that progress. And after seeing, after having such a long period of time of seeing no progress, you're so happy to see something that it's, it's motivating, but there will be a point and it's usually somewhere between weeks six and 10 where you just are not loving it. It's not fun. You're not necessarily motivated. You're not, I call this with the folks that we work with the oatmeal stage. And I call it that because um, oatmeal is one of those foods where it's like, it's not good. It's not bad. It fills you up, but it's not particularly exciting, right? So this is that stage. You will hit this. And this is why I bring it up. There has to be something, some reason, some something that makes you show up when that stage hits, right? So when that stage hits, it's not about just seeing the outcomes that motivate you. It's I am going to do this because my why is X, Y, and Z. And I know that in showing up and doing the work will produce X, Y, and Z. You are far more driven and focused on the the habits that produce the outcomes as opposed to the outcomes themselves so you've got to have a focus you've got to name what it is that you want and you have to have some kind of reason as to why you want that now that may may, maybe like we talk all the time on here and you'll even hear it in this conversation clip here in a minute about mountains and outdoors and climbing and all these things that seem kind of hardcore or whatever. And in reality, if you were out there, you would realize they're not that hardcore. (laughs) It's just putting one foot in front of the other, but that's a topic for a different day. Everything sounds uh, to some people, and they've expressed this to me in emails, like, I I don't know that I fit that. Like, I don't know if the things that I want to do are that tough. Honestly, I just want to be in good enough condition to hike the hills behind uh, the foothills behind the city that I live in. You know, do I fit this demographic? You do. So remember that your goal, what you, what it is that you want and why it is that you want it does not mean that you were trying to summit Everest. It could be much simpler than that. There was a video that started circulating a couple of years ago during the holidays and just saw it recently, which is what made me think of this. There is an older gentleman uh, who's got to be probably in his 80s or so who goes to his garage and and, and it first shows him in the fall and then continues to progressively advance during the seasons until eventually it, it culminates at Christmas. It shows him in his garage and he's moving something around and eventually you see it's this kettlebell. And so he goes to his garage and he's constantly trying to move this kettlebell. He raises it in front of himself, drops it to the ground, raises it in front of himself, drops it to the ground. And then eventually it shows him on Christmas morning and he wakes up out of bed he gets dressed. He's looking in the mirror, kind of, you can tell he's giving him, him, 
uh, his self this mental motivational speech and it, it, it then pans to him going to his family's christmas dinner and then it, it it shows his granddaughter running up to him and he was he was preparing because he wanted to raise his granddaughter so she could put the star on the christmas tree right so when when you're thinking about things like what it is you want to do why it is that you motivate why it is that it motivates you to do those things it does not need to be something crazy it could be as simple as playing with your kids and you know whatever whatever phrase you want to attach here being more fit getting in shape whatever um can definitely be highly motivating if you feel like you can't keep up with your kids so the one thing i probably want to um stress is you know people often come with that question i just want to do, do whatever i just want to be able to let's get rid of the just i want to be fit i want to be able to chase my kids around i want to be able to you know jump into adventures i want to feel good in my body i want to feel strong i want to feel capable those are not just you know i think those are all really important things right to to be able to do I think the the main differentiator is, you know, what are you, if, if you think about like, you have this thought of, I want to do whatever, let's take a little step uh, back and think about what's, what's the why, what's bringing you to saying that thought? Is it because you, there's something that you want to be able to do? And, and that's a good why we'll look at that. Is there something that you feel needs a change? Yeah. So the main differentiator is like, what's the reason why? What's, what's bringing you to that? Is it that, you know, you're, you're having some health issues and you've been, it's, you know, you've been told maybe by a medical professional that it'd be good for you to move more, or you get the sense that you should move more, whatever that is. If it's going from being sedentary to being healthier, it's a, that's an awesome goal. And moving your body, you know, studies have shown, you know, a good minimum for good cardiovascular health is moving for 150 minutes a week. It's not a lot. So if you're currently doing not very much and you work up to that, you're going to see some significant benefits in, in how you feel, how you sleep, potentially stress levels, et cetera. And that's, that's a great goal. I think you have to be clear on the why. And it also has to, just like happiness, motivation's an inside job. You know, you don't just wake up and feel motivated, right? You've got you've to have a strong reason and reminder to do it. So if you, if you can figure out what that why is, it's got to be from you. It's not, okay, maybe sometimes it's a little bit external. The doctor says you've got to make a change. However, you still know that I want to make this change because I want to be healthier or I want to reduce the amount of medication I'm taking or I want to send a, set a good example for my kids. Those are great reasons, right? But if your motivation is solely on my friends are doing it or my friends did it or that just looks cool or it looks good on Instagram, Strava, whatever it is, or, you know, some other silly thing, it burns calories. These are not good motivators. You know, when you're tired in the morning and it's 530 and you know that you got to put your stuff on and get outside, especially if it's cold out, because that's the time you have to get it done. That is not going to work. You're going to hit the snooze button and go on. But if you can like remind yourself of your reason why you started that journey, you're going to be a little more likely to get your butt out the door and you need a plan. Number two, and thinking about how to develop this, right? So in number one, trying to define what it is that you want to do, why it's important to you. The next thing that you've got to do is you have to think about how much time do you have to really give to this, right? So you, you'll, we are ingrained to think that more is better, and that is not true. In fact, I'd encourage you to aim for what we call the minimum effective dose. What is the least amount that I can do to get something to change? And I fully recognize that is not popular in today's messaging where everybody seems to want to be hardcore and record themselves being hardcore and then post it and, you know, look how hardcore I am. Uh, but I frankly don't have time to be that hardcore. So find what the minimum effective dose is. If you think you should be doing something six or seven days a week for an hour each week, but you know there is no way you can do that, 
and you've only got 20 minutes, three days a week, 20 minutes, three days a week is a whole lot better than zero. And as the phrasing goes, and I love this, I would rather be consistently good than occasionally great. Find the minimum effective dose and you're going to want to budget that time each week, right? So you've got your what, you've got your why, how much time do you have to give, right? So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. is when I'm going to be active, right? But you're, that is going to help you set some targets because if you set that, like let's use Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 to 6.30 a.m. If you set that as a goal, you're very likely to show up as opposed to yeah, I think this this year I just want to be more active. Well, Monday comes if you don't if you didn't if you'd not written this down and set it aside. Monday comes and before you know it, it's like okay, well I'm going to do it in the morning. Oh, you wake up late. All right, I'll do it in the afternoon. Then you get off work and you go home and your kids are tugging at your legs and dinner needs to be ready and you forgot that Molly's got a soccer game. Okay, I'll do it Tuesday. And it's just a rinse and repeat cycle until it's May and you realize I never started and now it's like full blown summer, so there's no way I'm going to get it in. Whereas if you've got it written down as Monday at 6.30, 6 to 6.30 a.m., I'm going to wake up and do X, Y, and Z. You are responsible and accountable to yourself where you will probably go ahead and wake up and do it because you've said it. Even if for no other reason than you're motivated at the start of the new year, you're very there's a very high probability that if you've got the time set aside with specific days, specific times, and we'll talk about specific things in a minute, you're going to do it as opposed to the general idea of, I just want to get fit this year. So in that case, I would say it's, you know, if, if it's someone starting from zero and they want to work on improving their fitness, there are, there's probably some community resources they can, they can uh, maybe access that are not a high barrier to entry, you know, so schedule one session with a personal trainer in your local gym learn about the equipment that's around, learn about um, some simple exor- strength training exercises that would be good for you. Learn proper form first. Then maybe you find something online that is like a 30-day 30 30 challenge. Those are pretty popular and I think pretty motivating for people because there's a set time, there's a specific workout, and it's not like you're going to the gym. And you know, I see lots of these folks just wandering around, wondering what to do next. I'll do, I'll do, I'll do this machine for a bit. I'll do this one a bit. That's going to be better than sitting home on the couch, but it's not going to be as good as having a specific progressive plan. That's going to, you know, move you in a particular direction. Um, So, you know, look for those resources in your community, have a plan, right? You've failed a plan, you plan to fail. And the second thing is probably don't let, Perfect. Be the enemy of good. Now leads us to number three. Set a specific plan that names when, where, how often, and what you plan to do. It doesn't matter the days. It doesn't matter the times. You don't get more efficacy doing it in the morning before you eat as opposed to in the evening after you've eaten. There is no truth to that. Do not get buried in the nuances because they do not matter. Just do it. Think about your day. Think about your week. Think about when you are the most likely to have the free time. That could be Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, right? I mean, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about spacing it. There are a lot of different approaches that would tell you optimally it needs to be spaced evenly. There's so many different things. We don't care about optimal at this point. We just want practical. Figure out the days, the times, how often, the frequency, what, what it is that you want to do. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. And just set it in stone and do it. You are, like we said a second ago, way more likely to show up and do that thing at those times you've set aside versus the general idea of this year I want to get fitter. Yeah, it's the same as like, let's say you're going on, you're going on a road trip and you're driving from, I don't know, you're driving from Chicago to Denver. And uh, maybe you've been there before, maybe you haven't, doesn't really matter, but are you just going to get in the car? and hope that you find your way along, just to start driving in any random direction. And yeah, you're going to get further away from Chicago. You may, you may get closer to Denver. You may not. Right. So you're going to look at a map. You're going to look at your options for getting there. You're going to look at a few different routes. Some routes might be more scenic. 
Some routes might be more direct. Some routes might have toll roads. So there's many ways that you could get. You could you could decide, I'm not going to drive at all. I'm going to take a plane, right? <laughs> many ways you could get from, from point A to point B. But the fact is you need to really figure out like, where do I want to go? Where am I starting from? And which path, investigate a couple of paths for getting there. And I feel like the same is for fitness. Where am I now? And be honest with yourself. Don't be hard on yourself, but be honest with yourself. Um, I listened to an interesting podcast yesterday, Kyle, that said, I'm sorry, men in the audience, uh, that men tend to overestimate their abilities and capabilities by about 30%. And women tend to underestimate their abilities and capabilities by about 30%. So a lot of people starting out again, I want to get fitter. So it's just like, I got to go hard. I'm going to, I haven't done anything for three months, but I'm going to go to a CrossFit class. And what's going to happen? You're going to get hurt and then you're not going to be able to do anything for weeks. So be honest about where you're starting. Be realistic about what the goal is. So is the goal that I want to, I'm, I'm starting being kind of sedentary and I want to, I want to. I want to uh, just, I want to work on my, my basic fitness. So if we think about, I want to work up to moving 150 minutes per week, you could walk 150 minutes per week. Most people could do that already now. Plan it out. Doesn't have to be all at once in the day. You could, you could take two 15 minute dog walks every day. That's it. Most people could do that with no problem, right? I think it's good to, you know, it's, I think overall it's, Good to have a plan and know what plan is going to work for you. Some people are going to know, right? Maybe some people have done some things in the past and they know what's been effective or what they're drawn to, and they can kind of try that and see how it goes. But a lot of people uh, really don't know what they don't know. And sometimes they don't know what they want or need. If you um, have a more specific goal, like let's say it is a, it's a sport specific goal, or it's a mountain adventure is something that you want to do. Also, again, there's lots of great resources out there, right? There's lots of great books, blogs, podcasts, where you can learn a little bit, but also there's opportunities without, you know, again, dropping a ton of money to be able to talk to someone and get some advice. I mean, I have consultations with people like this all the time, 30 minutes, 60 bucks. Tell me about you. What's going on with you? What are you looking for? A lot of time people don't really know. By the end of the 30 minutes, I can at least point them in a right direction that that they know what might be some next steps. They know where that what types of programs they might be able to access that could be good for them. It could be one of our programs or it could be someone else's. I'll be realistic with people too if if what what we have to offer isn't the best choice for them. But I will always try to give some someone something to walk away with. Um, so don't be afraid to to ask for help. Right. So set that. So here, let's recap the three. The three are this. Number one, decide what it is that you want to do and why that motivates you. I would even tell you to take it the extra leg and write it down. Number two, how much time do you have to give? That's going to set up number three, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But if you know that you've only got 20 minutes, three times a week, then that's what you've got. Do not let that spoil the idea of perfection. If you wanted an hour, but you've only got 20 minutes, do the 20 minutes. And number three, with what you determine in number two, with after you determine how much time you got to give in a week, set the specific plan, name the times, name the places, name what you're going to do, name the frequency, right? I would literally write this down and they all work together. If you know what it is that you want, you want to work on strength, you know how long you have to give. You got three days a week for 30 minutes. Now you can budget it in number three, three days a week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from six to six 30. I'm going to strength train following the five by five program until spring. Now you have a game plan, right? And that again, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse here, but sometimes that's good. Uh, is is dramatically increases the chance of you doing something and hitting a goal this year versus just liking the idea of it. And I would say too, this has crossover to nutrition. I want to eat better this year. Well, what does that mean? Right? I would set some specifics to it. I'm going to wake up every day and eat protein at each meal. 
and include vegetables at each meal. That in a, when people say, I want to eat better, I want to eat healthier. What they're saying is, I want more nutrients. I want more fiber. I want more whole foods. I want more food from, you know, I want more of my fuel to be coming from food that is, has vitamins, minerals, and nutrients in it, as opposed to maybe things that don't have that. So set some easy benchmarks for that. I'm going to eat fruit two times a day. I'm going to eat vegetables two times a day. Okay. When I'm going to have fruit for breakfast and a snack, I'm going to have vegetables at lunch and dinner. And I'm going to do that five days a week. What about seven? Let's be realistic. Maybe the weekend gets away from you and you didn't have time. Five would be amazing when right now you've got none. The idea is the same though. Set specific parameters rather than these general ideas. And I think that you will get much, much, much further. Now, I told you just a second ago, the specifics matter, meaning it is, if you if you have your when and your where and your how often, you could be very confused about your what. What am I going to do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to build endurance? I don't, you always talk about zone two, but like, I don't know that about, you know, I don't know about that. This is where it can be incredibly incredibly helpful to purchase a program. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of ideas here in a second, and I'm, but I'm going to say this, and, and, and we're going to let Chantel chime in on this here in a little bit too. These are very, very affordable now, and they are extremely nice because you don't have to sit there and come up with the what. Most programs, when you go to purchase them, will tell you what the focus is on. This is on building strength. This is on building endurance. This is a combination or hybrid of both. It tells you kind of what it is. And what I love most about the ones I'm going to mention is it literally tells you what to wake up and go do. So if you decide Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 6 to 6.30, I want to improve my endurance, you go to one of these programs, you, you purchase or you download, some of them are free, you download the training plan, you wake up Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you execute what they have written out for you on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I think, you know, trying to come up with your own program, if you don't, ha- you know, even when you have the background and knowledge, you know, I've got the background and knowledge. This is what I do for a living, right? Programming and training people, but I don't write my own training program. I get a coach uh, because they're going to look at, they're going to look at my, um, my capabilities and goals a little differently than me. So, you know, it's, it's always nice to know that. And for me, it's really nice when I'm doing this for other people all day long, it's really nice that I don't have to think about it. Right. I just look at what the plan is for the day and I just go do it. So that's really nice to, uh, I think something that most of our athletes are really shocked about when they start working with a coach that they're actually training less. And it's because they're spending more time on the right things right? A lot of people you mentioned, Kyle, that are going to the gym and they're crushing themselves and they're always tired and they're not getting better. It's usually because they're working too hard. They're spending all their time at zone three and zone four, no time at zone one and zone two. So they're, and sometimes actually they're in the no man's land. They're not working hard enough to improve their upper aerobic capacity or lactate threshold, let's say. And they're not working at a low enough intensity to improve their aerobic conditioning. So all they're getting is tired. Um, so figuring that out sometimes can be a little bit tricky. Um, so that's why I say like, look out there at resources, you know, uphill athlete has a few different training books. So you could look at books. We've got lots of great stuff on our website. That's totally free. Um, we have the, you know, there's opportunity to work with a coach one-on-one, but we have some really exciting new options that are kind of in the middle too. So we, we have, um, training plans that you can purchase for different um, sports and adventures. So people can purchase a plan and they can um, follow that. Um, They can join uh, our membership program. We have three levels. So at the the first level, uh, people will have access to all of our training plans. So rather than just buying one, they would have access to all of them. And they would also have access to an entire workout library with 
ski, running, mountaineering, climbing, and other general fitness workout. For level two, they have access to the same those same two things, but there's also some community aspect of that. So we have a uh, we have a community app, um, and so they can they'll have the opportunity to join that. And there's sports specific channels where they can uh, meet other people training for similar things. And there's a coach that um, is part of that group that will answer questions. And then the third option, which I think is super cool, is the level three. And that is kind of a group coaching option. So the members in that group, again, they have access to all of those plans and they can choose what they want to follow. But there are also uh, weekly coach lectures on different coaching and sport related topics um, with all different types of experts. And in that group and also the community aspect, super fun. You, you get to, you know, we've had people that have um, met up in different places to train together, wh whether they're working for through similar objectives or they travel from Denver to Seattle and they find a buddy to go hiking with. And I think that part is really cool because for a lot of people working on these goals, it can be really lonely. Like maybe some people are lucky to have a group to train with in their town, but a lot of folks aren't. So it's really nice to have someone that you can have a community where you can nerd out about these things. And it's not your, your partner saying like, oh my God, could you please not talk about how awesome your new boots are for the fifth time this week? We have worked with and done things with Atomic Athlete. We have worked with uh, Summit Strength, which is a really great option if you are trying to game plan some uh, like a bigger trip, a bigger hiking trip. Uh, so you can check out their links in the bio as well. You, We have talked about and worked with and had Jake from Atomic Athlete on. They are excellent, excellent, excellent when it comes to uh, strength. They have a lot of different programs depending on what you want to do. And then they've got some less expensive options. Like they would send you their in-gym training schedule for 15 bucks a month. And assuming you had access either to your own gym or your own weights in your garage or whatever, you could follow that. And it's very easy to send it to you in like a, a small word uh, table and it's easy to follow. And then um, I love these guys, Mountain Tough. Their app right now is $99 for an entire year. And uh, they are not a sponsor of this. I, I'm not getting paid to say this. They don't even know that I'm saying this. I do not think there is a better value for $99 on the face of the planet than that app. You get a number of different training plans built around any goal you could fathom. And then they take it deeper too. There are things in there. There's encouragement about motivation and mindset. You'll see a, a very familiar face talking about nutrition in there. Um, but that is another option. And and then of course, like uphill athlete has a lot of great options too, depending on what you wanted to go with. So strength with atomic athlete and mountain tough and even um, uphill, although uphill is a little more engineered towards big endurance, building zone two, you know, if you've got a really, really ambitious trip coming up as far as that, they'll, you know, talk to you about zone two stuff as well as summit strength, but mountain tough and atomic, as far as like, as far as strength focused and, and building some of that other stuff are, are excellent and phenomenal programs that I would highly encourage you to check out. I will link all of those in the show notes for anybody interested. I do not get a dime from any one of them to say any of that. I've worked with them. I do consulting with all of them. Um, but I, I do not get a penny as far as they're not like a show sponsor or anything. They are four programs. I've worked with all four and they are all four great because they tell you exactly what you need to do to get your goal. So that'll be in the show notes if you want to check it out. Finally, I'm going to leave you with this because I think that this can be really confusing. How do you measure progress? How do you know if you're really progressing? And I'm going to give you four tips but I am going to, over the top of those four tips, um, in a much bigger, broader sense, say this. We have got to have realistic expectations. I think zone two and I think strength is a r excellent example of this. You are not going to put on pounds and pounds and pounds of muscle in four weeks following any strength training program, you are not going to become an, an endurance juggernaut overnight by doing a few sessions of zone two work on a treadmill at a 10% incline. Good strength, good zone two bases, 
take many, many months, and you're probably, well, I, I didn't like this when I learned this, years to develop. It is a gradual, progressive thing that builds every single year you get better. And that is where having a game plan can help. So with that baseline kind of established, here's a few things to think about when you're talking about actually measuring progress. Number one, and this is going to be cheesy, so it's true though, we've all got to learn to measure habits, not the outcomes. We are a society driven by outcomes. I want to see the scale move. I want to see the inches move. I want to see my bank account grow. I want to see a tangible outcome now. And it does not work that way. <laughs> it is a lot of investing your time and energy before you ever see the fruit pay off. So the thing that I would encourage you with, measure the, out, the habits, which you have 100% control over, rather than the outcomes and let the outcomes be what they're going to be. What does that mean? Did you show up Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 a.m. to do your planned workout? You can measure that. That is a habit you can measure. Did you choose your fruits during breakfast and a snack and your vegetables at lunch and a dinner and have protein at each meal five out of your seven days last week? You can track that. That is a habit you can track. And here's the beautiful part. If you execute your habits, the outcomes will 100% come. I can guarantee it. Earlier, I started this podcast by telling you that one of the things I have enjoyed the most over the years with Valley to Peak is developing a proven process if someone puts in the work. Here's what I love about it. It does not make me stress out at all because I know if someone follows it, they will see the outcome. When I first started doing this and when I first became a dietitian, there was this like pressure and stress of, okay, well, so I know that if someone does the work, then they will see the outcome, but they may not know that. They think I've got some sort of secret sauce and surprise, I don't. So there was a lot of pressure to see the progress because the Valley Peak would have a good reputation. And now I know there is a proven process and I know that if they follow that process, the outcomes are absolutely going to happen. So remember that measure your habits, not your outcomes. Number two really goes with number one and everything we talked about earlier, write it down. You will want to document this, especially if you've got a long-term plan in mind. And again, zone two and strength are both really great examples of this. If you have a certain lift, like let's say you're wanting to increase your squat, it's going to be really hard to do that squatting 135 pounds for five reps and five sets for the next 52 weeks. Your body will adapt to that and eventually you will stop growing. But if you have a game plan by one of the folks earlier that we had mentioned that progressively increases and you see you went from 135 to 145 to 155 to 165, 75, 85, up to 215, and you've been writing that down, you can look back and say, holy crap, that is a very tangible increase in my lifts and in my strength that I can see over the last year because you tracked it. The same is true in nutrition. You know, I have beaten that drum since day one. The best thing you can do for your nutrition if you want to change is to start tracking it. Uh, and that is definitely true here. So number one, we all need to measure our habits, not just our outcomes. Number two is we should all write things down because that's going to give you a tangible way to actually document it and see if you're ever progressing. And this goes into number three you've got to adjust it whatever your game plan is in the beginning if you are trying to go from doing nothing to doing something then there's no need to worry about adjusting anything you should be proud of what you you're doing and, and that's it period if you have a if you have a specific goal though and you're wanting to see it progressively increase you're wanting to see that your strength progressively increase you're wanting to see your endurance progressively increase you are going to need to adjust it and the the way to adjust it is looking back at what you wrote down and adjusting it ever so slightly and that is number 4 the adjustments that you need to make Whenever you're trying to progressively improve, whether it's with nutrition, whether it's with strength, whether it's with endurance, are very small. You should be changing things less than 10% on a week over week basis, even a month by month basis, to perhaps even less. So one of the best but basic strength programs on the face of this planet is strong lifts five by five. And if you follow it right, you should really be adding no more than about five pounds 
every week to week and a half on each lift. Yet, most people have no game plan, so they just go in, throw as much weight as they can on the bar and start lifting. Um, and they find out very quickly that that's, it doesn't do anything. But if you start from where you should start and you progressively increase, then you will adjust. Never have I done less and seen more progress than when I did that because I had a tangible plan that actually worked. So the four things when you're looking at measuring progress, number one, have a realistic expectation. That's kind of the baseline. Number one, measure habits versus your outcomes, write things down, increase and adjust ever so slightly. Finally, there will be a point where you will have to exercise discipline instead of motivation. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to get done. There will be, and there are a lot of things in life that we don't feel like doing, but we show up to because we have to. And if this is a goal of yours, it will be inconvenient at some point. At some point, you are not going to want to do this. And and I'll be honest with you, there have been seasons of my life that have lasted longer than I care to admit and had zero desire to do it. And then there's been seasons where I've been, you know, very excited to go do some sort of a training session or what have you. The key is not it is not going off of what you feel and just doing exactly what you know you need to do. And you will see more progress this year than you ever have. I would almost guarantee it. So Thank you to Chantel for joining me. Big thank you to the whole group over at Mountain Tough, whole group over at Summit Strength, the whole group at Atomic, of course, the folks over at Uphill Athlete. We will link all of their programs here. If you have any questions for us, don't ever hesitate to send those. You can send them to info at v2pnutrition.com. We have this year a new program called Foundations Plus built on everything you just heard me highlight. There are different cohorts at different times of the year. So if you think you are interested in that, I would encourage you to check out the links below. We've got some signups coming up for classes starting soon, as well as a spring, summer, and fall cohort. So lots of stuff to come. Thank you for joining us. We'll talk to you again in a couple weeks.